Joshua Boatsy returns to action after, what, a year out of the ring with a 10-round unanimous decision win over Pavel Stepien. This was a very flat performance from Joshua Boatsy. Stepien was defensively competent, yes, but he had no power there at all. So it was kind of curious that Boatsy was so cautious and wasn't really sticking it on this guy and really attacking him with some vigor. It was like watching a sparring session between a couple of friends who didn't really want to hurt each other. And one thing I found strange as well is that in between rounds in the corner, Virgil Hunter was issuing instructions to Joshua Boatsy, and Boatsy didn't appear to be listening. At one point, Virgil Hunter said to him, are you listening to me? Are you hearing me? And I was like, what's going on there? Is there some kind of issue between Boatsy and Virgil Hunter? Or is that just the way Boatsy is? Is he an unresponsive kind of person? I don't know, but I found it strange. Now look, there are lots of people out there saying that Boatsy now is garbage. He's not as good as we thought he was gonna be. And this performance proves it. I'm not ready to write him off just yet. And I really disagree with the people who are putting him in the same category as Lawrence O'Colley saying Boatsy's just boring in the ring. Have they completely forgotten about Boatsy's career up until this point? Because he's been anything but boring. Have a look at Boatsy's record here. So yes, the Pavel Stepien fight was boring, but the Craig Richards fight was pretty decent. Prior to that, he fought Rickards Bolotniks. That was a good fight. Prior to that, he fought De Santos, a very uh, spectacular knockout that he scored. I think that's the one where his opponent was crying, wasn't it, after the fight. Marco Kalik, that was also an entertaining fight. Ryan Ford, Periban, he took out. Liam Conroy, that was a good knockout. So no, I, I don't know what people are talking about regarding Boatsy not being entertaining in the ring. He normally is entertaining in the ring. He normally fights with a lot of ferocity in the ring. I know he comes across as this placid kind of monotone character outside the ring in interviews, but in the ring, he's usually fiery. So much so that we've seen Joshua Boatsy bend or break the rules at times in the ring and do some dirty stuff. So yeah, this was not the normal Joshua Boatsy against Powell Stepien. Boatsy is normally a lot more aggressive than this. Now, what could be the reason for the lack of aggression here? Is it the time out of the ring? Perhaps that contributed to it. But another thing which is a possibility. I'm not saying that this is the case, but it's a possibility. And it's the fact that Joshua Boatsy has been based out in the United States for his training camps for several fights now. And there's one thing I always am concerned about with fighters who train overseas and then fight somewhere else where there's a huge time difference is jet lag. Now, some people deal with jet lag a lot easier than others. With Joshua Boatsy, the way he looked unenergetic against Pavel Stepien. Maybe that was a factor as well as the time out of the ring. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. And another possibility is that it's just the training methods of Virgil Hunter. A lot of people feel like that style doesn't really suit Joshua Boatsy, that it's too measured, that there's not enough injection of pace in Virgil Hunter's style. And that he's actually making Joshua Boatsy worse. He's actually getting Joshua Boatsy away from the things that he does well naturally. Again, that injection of pace, the aggression, and all that kind of thing. He's trying to make him too technical and taking a lot of the rawness away. That's one perspective out there. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Ultimately, we will find out in due course. Now, I think he was with Virgil Hunter for the Bolotniks fight, right? I'm certain he was with Virgil Hunter for the Craig Richards fight. I know that. And that was a measured performance from Boatsy. There was moments of hyper aggression, but for the most part, it was kind of a measured performance and his stamina didn't look great in that fight. So again, that lends maybe credence to the possibility that there's some jet lag issues going on there. And remember, the longer you stay out there in the United States, the more acclimatized you become to their time. And so the jet lag can get more set in when you spend more time out there, let's say a year doing these long training camps and whatever. So yeah, that's my take on it. I'm not ready to write Joshua Boatsy off just yet. I've seen lots of fighters over the years put in stale performances. I mean, Evander Holyfield was notorious for it. He'd go from putting on a great performance in one fight to then being disappointing and uninspired in the next. When you look at him beating Riddick Bowe in their rematch, he went into that fight as a big underdog. But right after that, he lost to Michael Mora in a very uninspired, flat performance. So Holyfield was always like that throughout his career, very inconsistent performances. 
Maybe Joshua Boatsy's the same. Or maybe it's a case of Boatsy needing to feel some danger to allow him to get up for a fight. As I said earlier on, Stepien was defensively competent. So he's not a guy that's just going to be that easy to open up and hit with the shots that you want to hit him with. But offensively, there wasn't really any danger there. Didn't have any power in the shots, unimaginative offense. And so after a few rounds, you really would have wanted to see Boatsy step the pace up and put some real heat on the guy, but he never really did. Flat performance. So that's my take on it. I'm not writing Boatsy off just yet. He says that if he's offered, and he said this in the run-up to this fight with Stepien, that if he's offered the winner of Artur Baterbiev against Callum Smith, next, he won't turn it down. We will see if the winner of that does offer him the fight. But his promoter, Ben Shalom, said that the fight they want next is the Anthony Yard fight. So which is it? Are they going to go for a world title or is it Anthony Yard or is it just an opportunity thing whereby they've got a path set out for him to fight his domestic rivals, but if he's offered, he'll deviate from that path because it's too good an opportunity to turn down. Perhaps that's what they're talking about. So lots for you guys to uh, discuss in the comments. Let me know how you feel about it.